Very good morning, Bhante, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. As Qingming is only two weeks away, we thought it might be appropriate to share on the topic of Qingming, Lessons in Gratitude. A short introduction for Bhante. Bhante Dr. Dhammapala was born in Kuching in 1970. He was ordained as Upasampada Bhikkhu in Wat Chong Kedar in 1994 under the most respected Chao Kum Pra Raj Tamatara. Subsequently, Bhante sought spiritual dependence upon the guidance of Bhante Dhamma Sakaro Mahatero. He spent 15 years studying Buddhist philosophy, Pali and Sanskrit literatures in Sri Lanka and Hong Kong. In 2009, he obtained his doctorate of philosophy in Buddhist studies under the supervision of Professor Venerable K.L. Damajoti in the University of Hong Kong. After graduation, Bhante was appointed chief editor and spiritual director for the Buddhist Door website. In 2010 to 2013, he was the visiting assistant professor at the Center of Buddhist Studies, the University of Hong Kong. Bhante is the founder and abbot of Brahma Vihara Monastery and Retreat Center in Malacca, Bodhivana Monastery of Sungai Pele, and the Center of Mindfulness in Hong Kong. He's also on the panel of monastic advisors of Theravada Buddhist Council in Malaysia. Bhante travels frequently conducting meditation retreats Dharma talks, Dharma camps for youth and teens, and academic teachings in Malaysia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and China. Over to you, Bhante. Okay, so. Okay. Good morning, Namovadaya. So thanks for BGF for inviting me to share this topic, Qingming Lessons in Gratitudes, which is very relevant uh, in the next month. Then our Chinese ancestors in Malaysia are mostly uh, coming from the Fujian province, uh, Guangdong province, Hainan province, and um, Guangxi province. Huh? And the broad traditional Chinese culture and belief promoting major traditional festival and religious celebration in Malaysia. If you look at these events, they are celebrated almost every month. For example, during the Lunar New Year, right? And the mid of, of uh, the autumn festival, um, the streets are decorated with red lanterns. Eh? And during the Ulambana festival, um, you know, you find the singing stages to offer thanks to the God. And also during the night imperial celebration, right, you find the yellow flats uh, flying along the street and all kinds of vegetarian food are sold and distributed nearby the temple. So Malaysian Chinese really loved, uh, you know, traditional culture and festival and our ancestors have been preserving this traditional festival to their generation. Then of these different kinds of festive celebration, I will share with you the celebration of Qingming, which is one of the very important festival among Chinese belief and practice. First, we shall look at uh, other Chinese uh, traditional festival. You see, there are many uh, traditional Chinese festivals, and I will list 10 traditional festivals that are of important and significant to us. Right, the first one is the Lunar Chinese New Year, right? So the first two days of the Lunar Chinese New Year, right, they are the biggest festival that you know Chinese people celebrate. Of course, not really Chinese, but also <laughs> include uh, many others, eh? which lasts for you know 15 days. Then, of course, uh, during this uh, Lunar New Year, right, elders will give ang pao, right, to their children. And the second, right, the festival of the heavenly god or the jet emperor, right, we call it Pai Tian Gong, ha, Pai Ti Gong. Ha. And you know, Fujian people, you know, pay respect in the midnight on the eighth day of the Lunar New Year. And there is a saying that the ninth day of the lunar calendar is the 
first day of the new year, right? So the third is the Lenten Festival, right? Or Chap Go May. Uh, then it's also some time, right? Now, so that we heard of people say it's the Oriental's Valentine Day, right? And of course, uh, we find that a single man and woman, you know, will participate in the activities of uh, throwing a mandarin orange and seizing mandarin orange in order to find a couple. Anyway, <laughs> and the fourth one is the Qingming Festival, right? Or sometimes call it the Tom Festival. And we shall look at this one later. And the fifth one is the Dragon Boat Festival. And this is uh, celebrated on the fifth day of the, the fifth lunar calendar. And of course, every family is busy, uh, what we call, you know, wrapping the rice dumpling, right? And I don't know whether there's still people watching the dragon boat now, right? And of course, uh, you know, Chinese also mourn the Qu Yuan, right? And of course, uh, beside Qu Yuan, you see, this is also the day of remembering of all the historical figures who have contributed and sacrificed for the country and the nation. That's to remind our younger generation of their obligation and responsibility, right? Loyal to the country and dedicated to the society. Um, then you have this uh, Hungry Ghost Festival, right? Sometimes it's called Zhongyuan Festival. Or uh, now, uh, you know, it's called Ulambana Festival. And of course, the folk call it Ghost Festival. So this celebration of the festival, you know, start from the day of opening of the ghost gate, right, the gate of the ghost, right, on the first day of the seventh month of the lunar calendar until the end of the month, and which lasts for a month. So while offering sacrifice to our ancestor, right, we should also care and help the lonely elders, the poor one, and the other unfortunate one. And the seventh, uh, Mid-Autumn Festival, right? The Mooncat Festival. So this is a day of a family reunion and children carrying lanterns, right? When we were young time, and, you know, the family members, you know, get together eating mooncats, right? And another one is the Double Nine Festival, right? So this is on the ninth day of the September, and this day was designated as the, what we call the elderly day. So instead of celebrating the Double Nine Festival, Malaysian Fuchin also celebrate the birthday of the Nine Imperial God, Gao Wang Ye, Jiu Wang Ye. However, the origin of the Nine Imperial God is still very doubtful anyway. Then, then you have this uh, Winter Solstice Festival, right? And every household will make a glutinous rice bowl right, to celebrate the winter solstice. So, yeah, it is a round desert made of glutinous uh, rice flour, flour, and it symbolizes the harmony and reunion of the family and the happiness of family. So, you know, the folk also has a concept of that eating this glutinous rice bowl will eat you know, one year older <laughs> on these days. Huh? And the last one is a Lunar New Year Eve. Okay, so this is very important for Chinese family reunion dinner. And this marked the end of the lunar calendar year. So Chinese will offer food and worship ancestors and thanks to God. Right? So these are uh, 10 important and significant celebration and festival passed down you know, by our ancestors. And these festivals are still celebrated by many Chinese worldwide. So besides celebration, we also have an awareness and proper understanding behind of all these celebrations so that they can be properly passed down for our future generation. Now we look at the Qingming festival, right? So the topic is about the lessons in gratitude Right. So, um, yeah, the coming Chengming for this year will be held on the 5th of April. Yeah. So, yeah, Chengming is also called the Tom Sweeping Festival. 
So during this Tom Sweeping Festival, right, Chinese people <clears throat> will visit tombs, right? Worship their ancestors with uh, incense sticks and flowers and fruits. So obviously this festival uh, commemorates ancestors and to express our filial piety to our departed parents and ancestors. So this is very significant for our younger generation, right? Uh, the sense of filial piety to our parents should be instilled right, in them. And at the same time, to cultivate their sense of gratitude to the parents. That's why, you know, this is called the day of filial piety to parents. And this is encouraged more younger children, not only showing filial piety to our parents, but also our duty to support our parents while they are still alive, be obedient to our parents, not forgetting our root. Um, yeah, so Qingming Festival also has another significance. Right? Besides a festival for tomb sweeping and worshipping ancestors, it is also a joyous festival for people to get close to nature, you know, to go out and to enjoy the fun of spring. That is why it is called Qingming, right? Uh, you know, and translate into English like clear day. Uh, so after knowing briefly what is, you know, Qingming festival, right, it can be summed up as follows. The first, you know, is to visit, uh, what do you call, you know, the grave and the burial ground to pay our, or to respect our ancestors and be gratitude, right, to our parents. However, um, you know, paying respect and be act gratitude to our, uh, to our ancestors shall not be waited until they pass away. And we want to promote, you know, filial piety to our parents while they are still alive, especially in this present society. Uh, the relationship between family members become more and more distancing. That's partly due to, you know, the social media and our education. So we easily neglect our role to pay respect to parents. That's why uh, this festival is an awareness to awaken people to be obedient and to be filial piety to our parents, right? So this is the first one. And the second one is to go outing and to get close to the nature, enjoying the fun of spring in the outing with family members. <clears throat> So the Buddha uh, value right, highly the virtue of gratitude. So after the Buddha's you know, enlightened, he lives in gratitude. You know, throughout his life, the Buddha treated everything with gratitude for people who help him you know, and things around him. He showed by example to demonstrate what is gratitude to us. And you look at these photos, right? It's taken in Bogaya. Gaya. Uh, what is this building for, right? I think you all know this uh, when you travel uh, to Bogaya. Gaya. Uh, it says the Buddha stood here and stared at the body tree from, the, from this building, right? Without blinking, uh, you know, um, his, his eyes huh? in order to express his thanks and gratitude to the body tree, right? While he was meditating under the body tree, right? For enlightenment. So this one is happened during the second week after his enlightenment, right? So the Buddha has said, there are four objects of gratitude, right? The first one is the gratitude to parents. <clears throat> the first one, yeah? gratitude to parents. So being a man, he right, must not forget his root. And this refers to parents and ancestors who gave, up, who, give, who gave birth to us. Therefore, we should be grateful to our ancestors and to our parents. So in addition to worshipping our ancestors, right, we must also show respect to our parents. Right? That's because the parents bring us up, right? out of love, and responsibility. So that's why gratitude to parents is the most important object of gratitude. 
And the second one is gratitude to country, right? So when you talk about the country, right? If the country is strong, right? And then the people definitely prosper. Then the prosperous of the country rely on the unity, right? Harmony and gratitude of the community. And citizens can enjoy a peaceful and prosperous life because of the support given by the country. And the third is the gratitude to sentient beings. So we depend on many people for our living in the world, right? So we should be grateful you know, for all the people who supported me. Nobody can live alone, right? Their life, our life, right? Are all mutually dependent on each other's. So this is the third one. And the fourth one is the gratitude to the triple gem. Here the triple gem referred to Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. So as a disciple of the Buddhas, you know, Buddha is our teacher, right? Dhamma is a guardian, right? So we follow his teaching. Then the Buddha discovered the truth of dukkha, right? The suffering. And the Buddha also showed us, you know, the path leading to the cessation of suffering. That's why um, we have a lot of gratitude, right, to our to the triple gem, right, Buddha Dharma and Sangha. And of course, we you know show gratitude to the Sangha members who carry the Dharma Dutta's work, you know, from generation to generation uninterruptedly for the past 2,600 years. Okay, so it is said that the Prince Siddhartha's mother, right, Queen Maya, passed away on the seventh day after the birth of Prince Siddhartha. So Queen Mahamaya is believed to have been reborn in Tushita heaven. Then after the Buddha's gaining enlightenment, right, the Buddha thought of his mother and intended to pay gratitude to his own mother. Then seven years after his enlightenment, the Buddha is believed to have visited the heavenly world called the Tawa Timsa, heaven, right? To teach Apidhamma to a congregation of devas or celestial beings. And it is said that his departed mother, right, has come down from Tushita heaven, right, to Tawa Timsa to listen to the Buddha's teaching on Apidhamma. So the Buddha is said to have spent the whole of three months rainy reason, eh, rainy season, yeah? rainy wasa, right in the Tower Timsa heaven. Of course, coming down to earth every day to collect you know, arms and have the food. So during his uh, visit, right, the Buddha has given a brief summary of what he has taught to venerable his chief disciple, Sariputtas. Then Sariputas elaborated it and taught to his own group of 500 Buddhist monks, right? His own disciple. So it says the Buddha's mother, right? Queen Mahamaya, after listening to the Buddha's teaching on Apidhamma, attained the Sotapanna, right? Sotapanna means stream enterer. First of the, it, it is the first of the four noble spiritual stages of full enlightenment, okay? Now, in the Anguttara Nikaya, right? The sutta called Going Forth, Babacha. It says that there are these three duties uh, that have been praised by the wise one. And one of them is supporting parents. Yeah, it says monks, these three things have been enjoined by the wise and good, what three? The first is charity, right? Dana. Going forward, Babaja, that's from the home to the homeless life, and supporting of mother and father, right? Mata Pitona Upatana. So these three are three duties. So in Thailand, and there is this tradition to renounce, you know, becoming a monk. And because they believe sons right, entering temple pass on considerably uh, married uh, to their parents uh, to their mothers yeah so this is like uh, you know paying back 
the cause of uh, mother's milk. Uh, so this is uh, in Thailand, right? How about Chinese? We Chinese also have the same belief. It says that if a son renounce, right, the nine ancestors, yeah, will be uh, ascended to the heaven. In Chinese, it's called uh, so here, uh, you see, there is a real story. Right? So there was a monk uh, who was uh, who went into seclusion, right, for many years after becoming a monk. Right? So during that seclusion, he made a vow, right, a monk of Mahayana, right. He made a vow and he burned his finger. Right? He fit, burn his finger. So they take it as kind of uh, the tongue practice, right? Really that you have to make a very strong vow. So then the finger ashes, after, after burning the finger, right? So collected that finger ashes and he divided, you know, into small, nine, into, the nine, into the 10 small bags. And then he said to his attendant, right? This 10 bag of ashes, right? You share equally, among all sentient beings. And remember, leave one back to my mother. So he said, I do this because I want to repay my mother's kindness. Uh, so later on, yeah, his mother received the ashes. And of course, uh, his mother thought it was medicine, right? And, you know, she didn't know that was the ashes. Then the, the attendant who brought ashes to her, ma, to, to her said, yeah, you know, this medicine uh, sent by your child, sent by your child, huh? you should take it quickly, you know. Then uh, that is because, you know, his mother had a heart attack symptom, right? And, of, and was in a poor condition and her life was in danger. Later, later on, his mother, thought it was a medicine and then she took it. Right? So no long after, uh, you know, something miraculously happened, her body gradually recovered. So what does it mean, right? That is to say his mother originally had an heart attack symptom, but later eating the ashes of finger burning, right? Ashes and her sickness has gradually recovered. Anyway. It is not because Aisha's take an effect. It is because uh, her son's becoming a mom, right? And he repaid to his parents. So the merits of becoming a mom is uh, immeasurable, right? And yeah, still many people misunderstood that if a mom renounced, right? He will not care for his parents. This is not true, right? Because in Vinaya, <clears throat> it is said that if his parents, right, was sick, right, the monk should go and see them even if they do not ask for. That is because it is the duty of monks to take care of elderly parents. So the filial piety is also practiced by monks, huh? although they have renounced the worldly possession. So taking care of elderly parents are our responsibility, right? Even though we have become monks and nuns, we still can support our parents. So yeah, parents are great, right? And they have different, they have four different names listed in the suttas, yeah? The first, they are called the Brahma, Right? And the second is called the first teacher. And the third is called ancient deities. And the fourth is worthy of an offering. And we look at the first one. What is Brahma? Right? In an ancient India, in a religion, Brahma refer to the creator God. Right? So Hindu in, in Hindu religion or the Brahmin religion, they believed Brahma creating the human beings and caste system, right? So the Buddha uses the, the same concept of Brahma, but doesn't refer to the creator God uh, because the Buddha referred Brahma as purity, 
Okay. And that's because, you know, the parents giving birth to us, they are considered as the Brahma. So the children should respect their parents with no hesitation, right? Then what is the first teacher? Right? Bubha, Acharya. That's because parents are the first teacher to teach their children, right? And what is ancient deities, right? Bubha Devata. Of course, we said, you know, the parents are deities at home. They are the best and supreme. They show unconditional love for their children. And lastly, worthy of an offering, right? So parents are worthy of an offering of all material comfort, such as food, drinks, etc., and deserved respect. So when they grow old, they deserve our, our support, right, and care. Therefore, after their death, Chinese has a tradition, right, to, to, to make an ancestral tablet at their house altar so that they can worship their parents and have gratitude to them. So Chinese has an ancestral worshiping. Uh, anyway, when I talk about this, you know, people thought it was a superstitious belief, right? So it is not a superstitious belief because this ancestor worshipping, right, is not found in the West, right? So Westerners cannot judge us from their perspective, you know, saying that we are superstitious in our ancestors worshipping. I think there is a reason behind because Chinese worship their ancestor, why? Because, you know, in the suttas, right, many places mention we have to be grateful to our ancestors. That means our ancestors, right, our parents, right, they live in our heart. Similarly, we also lived in the heart of our children. And this tradition is continuing. Right? So if, say, you don't have the ancestors in your heart, then your children will not have you in their heart too. So once your children uh, don't have you in their heart, I think, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what do you call? You also cannot teach them well, right? So, of course, they wouldn't listen to you. They will leave their home. You see, usually you look at the Westerners, right? They usually leave their home when they become, uh, you know, an adult, right? So, so once huh, we have thought of parents in our heart, uh, you see, that's really, we have fears of doing bad things. We, we always think of them and we think we, we you know, because our parents will get upset. Huh? Uh, so don't wait until they die. We should take care of them, you know, while, still, while they are still alive. Therefore, Buddhists in Buddhist country have a practice to pay respect uh, you know, two deities at home every day. So in this way, there is this, there is a last quarrel and conflict at home, you know, between parents and the children. Then the family can live happily and peacefully. And the Buddha taught us, right, to be grateful to parents till the end of their life. Yeah? Life comes from parents, huh? that's because the parents provide us food, materials comfort, giving us affection and love and taking good care of us when we were young. But in the present society, right, most of the parents consider their upbringing of their children is a kind of investment. If that is the case, right, our love to our children is no more pure and the family relationship will not be genuine and harmony. So in the past, there was, um, there was an elderly mother who was very sick. So the son has an evil thought, right? To throw away his own mother in the mountain. Then he carries his own mother and walk into the mountain. So while carrying his mother on the back, uh, the son, I right, heard the sound of his elderly mother 
breaking a tree branch behind him. So he thought to himself that probably his mother could not recognize the way back. So she made the sign along the way. However, he didn't care much and continue to go even deeper into the mountain. Then after reaching the desired location, right, he put his mother down and said without emotion, are you stay here? Okay. So then after listening to her son's kind of, uh, you know, the breaking and the shocking news, uh, you know, the old mother didn't even get angry. Instead, she said calmly and kindly to her son, oh, my dear son, I broke many tree branches along the way to mark for you when you go down the mountain afterwards. You just follow the sign down the mountain so that you won't get lost and you will reach home safely. So after listening to old mother's word, right, the unfilial child suddenly felt ashamed and cried and cried without stop. He kneeled down before his mother, asking for forgiveness from his mother for forgiving his ignorance and disrespectful. And his mother forgave him. And the mother and son returned home. And then after that, the son became very um, the kind of filial piety till the death of his own old mother. So the Buddha says, right, taking care of parents is indeed a blessing because parents are called Brahma, the first teacher, the ancient deities, and worthy of an offering. Um, okay. Father. Okay. You would not have done enough to repay your mother and father, even if you were to carry your mother around on one shoulder and your father on the other. And if you live like this for a hundred years, and if you were to annoy, mass, uh, the massage, the bath, and rub them, and even if they were to defecate and urinate right there, but you have done enough, more than enough, to repay them. If you encouraged, settled, and ground unfaithful parents in faith, Right? In unethical parents, in ethical conduct, stingy parents in generosity, or ignorant parents in wisdom. So here the Buddha says, How should we repay to our parents? The Buddha says, right, there are four dhammas right, that we can repay for them. Okay, not repay in the form of giving money. Yeah, but bringing our parents to the temples, strengthening their faith in the triple gem, right? Uh, encouraging them to observe precepts, five precepts at least, and encourage them right, to support the Buddha Sasana by making offering you know, to the temples, right? And of course, encourage them you know, to practice. Uh, meditation, you know, to realize the Four Noble Truth. So if the children can do these four things, you know, to their parents, uh, they have done their best to the parents and really a good son and daughters. So we, we really have to pay back when they grow old because one day we will grow old as well. And we need our children to take care of us honestly, right? So in another sutta, sorry, Anguttara Nikaya, Mahayanya Sutta, right? Um, you know, this sutta says, right? A Brahmin asked the Buddhas about sacrifice that involve a lot of killing of cow and other animals. The Buddha said, instead of worshipping the actual fire and killing of plenty of cows, right? Which bring no significance and harm to the nature, the Buddha 
uses the fire terminology, referring to three kinds of fire, which should be attended with care and honor, right? So the first fire is parents who should be honored and cared for. And the second fire is one's wife and children, employees and dependents. And the third fire represent religious person, okay? Monks and nuns who have either attained the goal of arahatship or have embarked on a course of training for the elimination of negative mental traits. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. And okay, now we look at another suttas, Sigalawada suttas, right? And it's from the Dikanikaya. So in order to respect our parents and our ancestors, right, we can accumulate merits and spreading love for our departed parents and laying down the favorable conditions of their uh, good karma of reborn in good destinies and ultimately attaining the liberation right, in Nibbana. So in the Sikalawada Suttas, right? Uh, there are five ways in which a child right, should attain to his parents. The first, having been supported by them, I will support them, okay? And I will perform their duties for them. And I will keep up the family traditions and I will be worthy of my heritage. After my parents' death, I will distribute gift or do dhanas on their behalf. So according to Indian tradition, right, the East is the most important direction. So this direction is deliberately chosen. That is because the day started in the East. So the life also begins with the parents' care. And so that's why in the Sigalawada Suttas, right, parents are worshipped as the east direction, that means parents are considered very, very important. Okay, now in another suttas, Anguttara Nikaya, the Boga Suttas, right? uh, it says that uh, one should honor, uh, honor and venerate uh, you know, the following uh, five kinds of people, right? When wealth right, is righteously earned. Of course, the first one is oneself, Right? When you earn enough money, right, you have to uh, you know, spend it wisely for these uh, five group of people. Right? The first for yourself, and then the second one is for our parents. And the third one is for your wife, children, okay, slave, uh, work, sports, and the main. And the fourth one is the parents and companions. And the last one, is the recruits and the Brahman, okay? And this, the fifth one, the last category is for making merits for a happy life hereafter, for happening to happiness and leading heaven world, okay? So in another suttas, right, in the Ekotar Agama, it says that uh, making offering to parents is equally uh, is to making offering to the Bodhisattvas who has one more birth to enlightenment. Okay. So here the here this one is in the in the one well, of the very ancient texts, Agama, Ekotar Agama, right? And Taisho. So the blessed one said to the monk, right? There are two dharmas for ordinary people to obtain great merit. What are the two? making offering to parents, one can obtain great merit and attain great reward, right? Then if one make offering to the Bodhisattvas who has one more birth to enlightenment, he also obtain great merit and attain great reward, okay? So we can see, you see making Offering to parents is also equal of making offering to the bodhisattvas hmm, 
who has uh, one more birth to enlightenment. So you can see the importance of offering uh, to our own parents. Yeah, how about if one does not respect parents? Yeah, and uh, Agama also said, you know, he will be reborn in a poor family. If one does not respect his parents and other elders, and also does not continue the family business, one will be reborn into a poor family. On the other hand, if one respect his parents, brothers, right, and kinsmen, and also making offering to them, one will be reborn in a rich family. Okay? So here yeah, there are several suttas. Eh? Now, okay. This is found in the Chakravati Sihanada Suttas eh, from the Diganikaya. You see, in our present society, we usually, yeah, it, it is what happened to us now. We lived, uh, you know, below 100 years. It says, the Sutta says, right, among humans of a lifespan of 100 years, eh, these three things happen, right? In fact, this is happening now. Eh? That is, the lack of uh, due respect for mothers and fathers. The second one is uh, lack of respect to the ascetic Brahman. Another one is failure to honor the elders in the family. So you see, these three things now become you know, widespread, right? Lack of respect to parents, ma, to, to, to our parents, uh, to the ascetic Brahmins, right? To honor the elders in the family. Right? So it says, right, this sutta say, uh, you know, the increase or the decrease of the lifespan of the people depend on whether parents are being respected and honored or not. Right? Um, of course, this is one of the three things, three events happen. So these three things happen when our lifespan of people uh, you know, decreased to 100 years. And of course, these things will get worse until the lifespan of people uh, remain only 10 years. Okay? So you, can, you see that. Yeah? So the Sutta continues saying that the small girl, you know, when the life uh, of lifespan of people remain only 10 years, it says that the small girl of five years old uh, also get married. Um, and of course, the Sutta also said, right? Um, people are normal practicing, you know, these uh, 10 meditators action, right? You know, they will, you know, they will do all kind of immoral action. However, the Sutta says, okay, don't get discouraged. The Buddha says, the lifespan of people increase when people start respecting their parents, respecting their religious, respecting religious men, and respecting the elders in the family, okay? So we can say that, you know, respecting parents and religious people, right, is one of the criteria leading to either increased or decreased of people's lifespan. If people don't respect their parents, the lifespan of people will definitely decrease. So this is suttas again, suggests that the filial piety is an important ethical practice that affect the order of nature, okay? So, yeah. So in the China, you see here, yeah, I think you know <laughs> the picture here show is the Chatu Maharajika Sutta. And this one is from Anguttara Nikaya. And in most of the Mahayana temple, right? In Japan, in China, you see, uh, many temples are guarded Right, by these four heavenly kings, right? They look after, they look like, you know, warrior figures who got four direction, right? The north, south, east, and west, and they what off malicious spirits, right? And of course, we are talking about, you know, these different kind of spirits that include Gandhava, uh, Yaksha, Nagas, and Kumbandas, okay? So, yeah, in these suttas, right, these four heavenly kings, right, will send their subordinate, sub subordinate, or personally, you know, come down, uh, you know, to the human world to inspect, uh, you know, people's virtue, right, 
okay, on four Bosatta days. Okay, I think you know what, what the date of four Bosatta is 8, 15, 23rd, and the last day of lunar calendar. Okay, there might be a discrepancy, you know, between Chinese uh, calendar and the Indian calendar, but that's okay. Uh, that make much not much different, right? We can follow the Chinese lunar calendar on the fifth, on the eighth, fifteen, twenty third, and the last day of lunar calendar. To see whether people observing the following, yeah, they will look at, they will come down to check whether people are respecting to their parents, observing at precepts. Yeah, that's why during Upasatha we observe at precept, and you know to perform, you know, meditative deeds, and whether they pay respect to monks, right? Then. These four kings, eh? when they come down and inspect, okay, they observe. If then they will report, right? They are what they call. They will find your finding. Yeah? They will report, you know, to the Tower Teams of Heavens. Huh? Um, why? Why they have to do so? Uh, they have to report because if uh, good people in the in the human world, uh, if they observe, right, this. Uh, this fourth thing, then the God will be very happy. And that's because the good people, you know, were reborn in the heaven. Yeah. So, okay. So you look like, you look at this, huh? if there are still good practice in the world, and it means there are still many good people living a holy life. You see, the God will be very happy. So that's because in the future, there'll be still more people reincarnated in the heaven, right? So when the number of gods increased, then, uh, then you know, they will not be afraid of the assurance. Right? So the God will continue uh, safeguarding the world, you know, from these evil yaksha interference. Huh? So, uh, from these suttas, right? It says if people are not respecting reverend, respect to the parents, right, or to the monks and nuns, then there will be increasing of fighting and wars because assurance like fighting. So if you look at this passage, uh, uh, you know, whether human being respect parents or not, or respecting the uh, respecting, uh, honoring. The, the, the monks and nuns um, has become the criteria of the ethical practices right? that directly affect the peace and harmony of the world we, we live in. So we are witnessing this scenario now, right, in our world. You see, that's because people are now less respecting their parents and elders and even no respect to the religious people. So you can see a lot of fighting now in the world. So definitely we have to deeply ponder, you know, their cause and relationship here. Then to inculcate, you know, the value of respecting the elders, the parents and the religious people so that our world will become a place, uh, will become a very peaceful place uh, with no fighting anymore, okay? Then now we look at another sutta, Sigalawada suttas. <clears throat> yeah, the children should frequently offer arms. Yeah, this is the fifth one, right? In honor of their departed parents. Yeah? Share merits with the departed parents for the better rebirth in future assistance. So Chinese Buddhist, Chinese Buddhists yeah, will honor their departed ones true. This three, right? Basically, I, I listed this three. Frequently do downers to Sankha members and share merits. Yeah? And of course, uh, the second is festival to honor the departed ones like Qingming or Ulambana or Luna Chinese if. Okay. And the third one is worship of ancestral tablets in the house. Yeah, you see, but the problems come. Right? According to Westerners, yeah, we have a lot of Western friends, right? And they don't understand our Chinese uh, belief, right? Uh, because they considered our Chinese worshipping their ancestors, uh, you know, giving them an impression that we Chinese are very superstitious, yeah? I think we have to look at 
the difference uh, first uh, between the Chinese and Westerners. Um, you see, the Chinese people, they have the tradition of worshipping their ancestors, but not Westerners. Yeah? I think Chinese, I think due to the influence of Buddhism, Chinese are the only one who put their ancestors on their shoulder and went around. That's why our ancestors, you know, to carry the ancestor tablet, even when they come from, uh, from China uh, to Malaysia, you see, they carry their ancestors on their shoulder. But for Westerners, they have only God in their heart, but not ancestors. You see, but for Chinese, they do not necessarily have God in their heart, but they must have the ancestors. Uh, now we also look at Chinese. Yeah? You, you look at the Chinese. Yeah? If they got success in their studies, they will surely you know, went home you know, to worship their ancestors first. Or even marriage also. They have to worship their ancestors. Yeah, similarly, when they got, got a good job, right? Uh, they also will go back home you know, to worship their ancestors. Even when Chinese uh, give birth to children, they also will go back home to worship their ancestors. That is why. That is because for Chinese, uh, we are very grateful to our ancestors. I think that partly due to the influence of Buddhism. Okay. So are you saying that this kind of ancestor worship is superstitious? Right? So I don't think so. You see, this is our Chinese belief, but not uh, superstitious. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, okay, if you look at all these things, right, we have covered quite a lot, yeah, because Qingming, yeah, this is a significant of Qingming festival, yeah. So, yeah, the Qingming festival is coming, right, so it is the day, you know, to remind us, yeah, to express our filial piety towards our parents and put practice in our day-to-day -day cultivation, even after their, their, their departure of this life, and we continue to do the same, uh, accumulating merits, you know, for the better rebirth until the attainment of Nirvana. So when I look at all these things, right, Qingming, <clears throat> ancestor worship, it's not superstitious, right? So this is an awareness for our Buddhists, right? Or even we talk about this is a version of our Buddhist attitudes towards, uh, you know, the Qingming festival. Okay, so now, this, this is the end of my talk, so I leave it to uh, a question and answer or any sharing. From Brother A.L. Chan, but the question, if one doesn't go back to the hometown for Qingming, but do own prayers from the place we are staying, does it mean that we are not filial piety? <laughs> you can do anywhere. <laughs> Provided you have the thought of your ancestors. I think that's more important. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. Another question from Sister Ivy. During Qingming praying in the cemetery with foods, after praying, can we eat the foods? I don't know, but usually when I was a layman, once offered, you know, I just keep it there. <laughs> I, I don't have, I, I don't want to bring back, you see, I don't, I, I just leave it there. <laughs> okay. And of course, uh, somebody said, you see, after offerings, yeah, so probably some other non-human, non, other non-human being, they will, they will eat. So just leave it there. Okay. So no need to bring back. Yeah. No need to bring back. I mean, I don't know. This is my personal, uh, you know, my practice. Yeah, I will leave it there. Yeah. So... Of course, other than, you know, these non-human beings eating, I don't know, but, uh, you know, there could also be other, the stray dogs or what, you know, they, they will come and eat. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. My, my, Bante, my father used to comment last time that uh -huh. uh, those things that we pray in the cemetery, uh, after we bring back, mm -hmm. it's like the taste no more there. Like the power, uh -huh. all these, uh, no more fragrance. It's different, really. Yeah, yeah. So why should you bring back that? <laughs> Just leave it there. <laughs> yeah. Other kind of animals will come and eat. Uh, so like, like them. Yeah. Share with them. Yeah. Share with them. 
Okay. Thank you. You will litter the place, or dirty the place, huh? Yeah, yeah, dirty the place, huh? Okay. Yeah, like you now, now today you should, the, the 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 management will ask you to bring back. Yeah, so you you have to bring back. Then you got to bring back. So yeah, you can settle it. Huh? You can settle it yourself. But again, don't offer to the monks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> oh, I think better still, you know, if you don't offer this kind of fruit, just offer the incense stick, the, the light will do. No need to offer, you know, fruits kind of thing. Just incense, waters, and the like will do, right? Or flowers, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bhatti. Question from Sister Siu Ling. But they, as we are aspired to reach Sotapanna, we go through the cycle of rebirth again and again now. Now, what is the meaning of life then? It's the meaning of life. Uh. Yolo, <clears throat> the meaning of life, I think it's quite clear, no? is to attain liberation. Right? So if we have not attained the liberation, right, we have to go right and round until uh, we finally attain uh, you know, Nibbana. Of course, uh, we, that is our, you know, the, our Buddhist determination, right, to aspire uh, to realize the Nibbana. Okay? It's not like yeah, another religion, you see, they said, ah, you know, after this life, you, you believe in him, right, you will go to the heaven. Right? So that becomes a criteria, believing in him. But in, in our Buddhist case, you know, believing is one thing, right? but still we have to keep practicing. Yeah, practicing. So that's why, you know, till you <clears throat> attain the sainthood, we are still, you know, go round and round in the samsara. But of course, um, you know, we will reborn in the better realms of existence, you know, continue our path, right? So that is also one of our, uh, you know, <clears throat> or one of our, uh, what do you call, aspiring huh? to, to reborn as a, in a good family, right? So that we can continue the path, we can continue to practice, okay? Thank you, Bhante. Another question from P.G. Ang. There seems to be different priority or hierarchy of reference from different suttas. Shall teachers, Sangha members come first before friends, relatives, or it doesn't matter? Most of the time, actual practice is often work, colleagues, friends, and temple work come first before our family. I, I, don't, I don't get the meaning here. <clears throat> yeah. It's a hierarchy. Hierarchy? In, in actual practices, often we, we have work first, like colleagues, friends, then temple work, and then family is the last. Uh. Uh -huh. But in the suttas, is your, your order is different. Uh. Yeah, okay. But I think that depends on an individual, you see. And of course, uh, you know, in our Buddhist perspective, usually, uh, you know, we, we put the triple gem, uh, the first, right? But of course, uh, I don't know, for, for a lay person, yeah, it's also the duty to, to support the Sangha, but I think the family should put first lah. Yeah. So, but not to forget also to support, you know, the Sangha members. Yeah. And of course, other other <clears throat> other mandan book as well. Okay. So I think you have to adjust yourself which one come come first and which one is priority. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Bhante. Question from Wolf Berry. Confucius and Buddhists both are aligned to the view that we should thanksgiving to our parents and ancestors. Is it right to correlate it? I think, I think that's the beauty of Buddhism is that, you know, a lot of these Buddhist, uh, you know, these elements are huh, um, filtrated, you know, in our Chinese belief, like Confucianism. And it seems that there is no conflict you know, between the Confu Confucianism and Buddhism. So I don't see there is a problem, uh, you know, to correlate it. But of course, uh, you know, in Buddhism, we have much more than, much, 
much more than this, that is the attainment of nirvana. That is a cessation of suffering. That one surely you don't find it in, in others, you know, the, what you call our Buddhist uh, Confucianism. Yeah, so in terms of this mundane you know, practice like filial piety to our parents, ancestors, etc., you see, we have this uh, common similarity with others, uh, uh, you know, Confucianism or even with other religion as well. So I don't see there is this conflict. Yeah, even when you talk about uh, Buddhism, can we correlate with uh, Hinduism or with uh, Hindu, with the Muslim or with Christian? I, I, I think that's perfectly all right. Yeah. But of course, uh, Buddhism default from other religion is that uh, Buddhism talk about you know the realization of the four noble truth. This teaching definitely you don't find it in other religion. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Another question from Eric Tiao. Dear Bhante, since the modern cemeteries have better management systems, instead of praying at the cemetery site. I think the best is to do dana on Qingming and transfer the merits to all ancestors. Is this right action? Yeah, of course. You can do it every now and then. Huh? Need not to wait until the Qingming, you see. So like, uh, you see, you can do dana. You think of your parents, you know, and you can, you know, thought of, uh, you know, uh, doing dhanas and share with merits. Huh? So you need not to wait until Qingming, of course, Chinese will say, okay, during the Qingming, during Olambana, okay, you share the merits. But uh, from my perspective, you can do dhanas uh, every now and then. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> I see uh, different, different traditions, different cultures have uh, different interpretations. This is like in Sri Lanka. You see, they don't have Qingming, you see. Uh, but they would do it every year, you know, during their commemoration day. Okay. So, but of course, Chinese emphasize, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, filial piety. That's so why you have this uh, Qingming or Ulambana. So, yeah, according, according, yeah, in our Chinese tradition, yeah, it is quite right, right action, like you said, you know, to do uh, sharing, you know, transferring merits on these days. But of course, you can do any days. Yeah, to share the marriage with them. When you think of something else, you don't want to share with a good marriage, you just share with them. That's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bante. Question from Sister Jacqueline. Bante, what about prayers to ancestors conducted in the temple? We also don't take back food home? Yeah, it's better you take back lah, because the monk's not going to eat those things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we encourage you to take back those things. Okay, even usually, you know, you know, in, in, in many temples, you see, a lot of people bring a lot of food, fruits, you see. So once you finish all these things, uh, I think you better bring back. Yeah? Um, okay, you better bring back. Mm. Thank you, Bhante. <laughs> Bhante, what is the reason why uh, those offerings uh, cannot be offered again to Sangha? Maybe can explain. Like I think just now you have said, you see. So if uh, someone offered this out of uh, out of uh, you know <clears throat> devotion, right? Then if someone has taken this, do you think it's good to offer to the sangha again? Because when I talk, some has taken it mean other non human being, other beings, you know, may have taken the food already. You see, like you said, you know, the taste might not be there anymore. You see, so I think it is not that good if we offer to the Sangha, okay? So I think when we offer something, you know, we offer something with good heart, uh, not the food that we don't want to eat, and then we just leave it, we just offer to the Sangha. So I think this is not, no, not wise, lah. Uh, not wise. Uh. So, okay, so I think if, if you have problem with all this offering of food, uh, then better don't offer the food, lah. Uh, offer the the you know the the, the lights uh, offer the incense sticks okay they offer the flowers then we we have no problem with the food remain okay or the fruits remain okay yeah thank you Bandit. okay so we also share the marriage to our ancestors to our parents okay so
So we stay until the end of uh, sharing merits. Yeah? Or share your merits with all beings. Eta vata cha amhehi sampadam bongya sampadam sabe satanu modantu sapa sampati sedia idang mengya tina hotu sukita hontu nyatayong Ida me nya te na ho tu so ki ta hon tu nya ta yo. Ida me nya te na ho tu so ki ta hon tu nya ta yo. Let us also make some aspirations. By the grace of the merits that we have accumulated, may we never follow the way of the foolish. May we be blessed with wise friends and skillful teachers who help us along the path of Dhamma. Wherever we may be until our final liberation, may we never stray from the path of Dhamma. May we always have the chance to practice Dhamma and one day realize the highest bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. 